Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. A friend of mine contacted me and said, hey, can you build a table that looks like this? And I said, I, I, I can. Um, oh, stink, I'm gonna do this. So today we're building two dining room tables. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Red oak. Um, yeah, I know. It, it's not white this time. Somewhere around 100 board feet of red oak, and it all comes S2S. So we are going to have to cut this all to length. I like to use a bow saw. Uh, actually, it is a buck saw, and it works really well. Big, big cross-cut teeth, and it's designed for cutting through logs. When I don't care about the surface of the final because I'm making everything a little bigger, this actually works really, really well and marches through the wood phenomenally quickly. For most of the four-quarter um, stock, it's actually four-quarter finished. Um, it, it, it goes through really quickly. But for this leg stock, yeah, uh, this is serious stuff. It is eight-quarter and milled down to slightly under seven-quarter. So it's 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 beefy oak. <laughs> but for the legs, we want the legs to be three inches by three inches, and so that means we need to laminate two of these together. So that means we need to rip down through this almost two inch thick board. Uh, and that means I'm gonna need a big saw. So I'm gonna have my big tooth hand saw on here. Now I could do this at the saw bench, but I actually prefer large wood like this to do vertically on the bench. Uh, it's a lot like resawing because it's so thick and uh, it actually works out really, really well. I prefer this over doing it on the saw bench, but that's just kind of a personal thing. So I'm gonna treat it basically like resawing, cutting it at a bit of an angle, rotating it around every so often to make sure I'm following the line and to let it track in the previous curve. And then when we get close to the end, the vise is going to want to pinch up on it, so I'm going to loosen it up a little bit, hold it, and then just do the final stroke or two and let it fall through. So there's two halves of one leg, and i got to make eight of these. So I've got to do a lot of cutting to make these up. And this is the story of most of this table, because um, there are actually two tables, and uh, they're going to take a lot of work eight legs that are all three inch by three inch. I am gonna use Elmer's Wood Glue Max. It is my favorite go-to PVA glue and it is phenomenal. It works really, really well and it's, it's yeah, it, it's just every status about it is one of my favorites. Also, I'm gonna use a lot of it and you'll see an incredible amount of squeeze out. One of the rules of thumb I have is always use way more glue than you need because it is better to have too much than too little. Um, you can always squeeze it out and get to exactly what you need. You can never starve a joint by squeezing it too hard. And one of the things about PVA is it needs an incredible amount of force to actually bind what it's supposed to. Um, so you need to clamp the snot out of it and you're not going to starve it by clamping it too hard. That is an old myth that is uh, completely untrue. Uh, with PVA, you've got to clamp it tight. I mean, if you're using high glue or epoxy, then yes, you can starve the joint with those. But with PVA, no. Squeeze it up. And I'm going to use uh, all of my hand clamps. <laughs> uh, I have enough to do two legs at a time. So every day I would come down and switch out a pair of legs, set those aside, and clamp up the next set. But then once these are out of clamps, now we need to go about actually squaring them up and truing them because uh, they still have the rough saw marks and we need to get them down to flush as well as uh, a full three inch by three inch. So all surfaces need a little bit taken off it. I use my low angle jack as a heavy mover. Uh, because it's a little easier to push through the wood, it is much easier to put a heavy chamfer on that, take off the material, and get it down close to it. Then I'll come with a smoother to actually get myself a smooth surface. Check it and make adjustments where necessary and, uh, until I get a nice smooth surface that is square on all four sides and cleaned up. And I'll repeat that on all four sides of all eight legs until right. eventually I have eight boards that are all the right size. The stretchers are really easy. Those are just boards, so those don't actually have much other than cutting them to length. But for the tabletop, that's a lot of boards, and we need to laminate these together. And this is one of the, the tricky parts. Um, I, I could do the tabletop and two glue-ups, but then I might have problems with the joining of the two panels together. And actually, in this case, for this size, I'm just going to do it all as one big lamination. Um, it takes a little bit more being careful of what you do, um, but I like the way it, it glues up. I'm going to clamp up two boards so that the top side of the table is out on both of them and the down side of the table is in toward the other board. This way, when I flip them out, they will join to each other and any imperfection in one will be matched in the other one. So if there's any angle in the plane, they cancel each other out. 
I use a scrub plane to get rid of the really high spots. Um, some of these boards were, were pretty well twisted up, um, so they can they can take off quite a bit. And then I'll come in with a plane that takes off a heavy amount, and then I'm going to come in with the jointer and get it really nice. And the jointer will tell me most how it's how flat it is. But these boards are long enough at 60 inches that um, I really need to check them with a straight edge as well. Because I'm gluing up so many panels in one big glue up, um, I need to make sure that every joint is, is perfect. I don't want any one of them to have a gap that needs to be squeezed out of the middle of the board. So the number eight is really, really useful in this one because it's wide enough to do both uh, full one inch wide boards. So I have two inches of board on here, um, but I can get a nice clean shaving all the way from one end to the other on both boards and it's very happy. And with that, they're all jointed up and we're ready to glue it. But before we do any glue up, we want to make sure we do a dry fit up. We want to make sure we get all the clamps set up because you don't want to be rushing when you're actually doing the glue up. Do a whole glue up without the glue, then take it apart and do it again. Now all the clamps are set up correctly. Everything is exactly the way you want to do it. You're going to be thinking through any problems you're going to run up on it. And so I'm going to be adjusting all of my clamps to be the right size. These are wooden beam clamps. Um, I have several videos on them, um, and they are a lot of fun. Uh, most of the, they're, they're all antiques. You can't find anyone who makes these clamp sets anymore because they are, they would be incredibly expensive. Yeah, you know, but I don't even have enough of those to go across this wide board. So we're going to need to pull in some of the Harbor Freight clamps. Uh, now I know a lot of people are going to immediately say you should put some wooden dowels, um, uh, wooden um, runners down the middle of those because it does stiffen them up. Yes, it does. Um, but I only use them like once every four years or so, and it's just not worth it for the amount of time I use on them. Um, they are only there when I need to do a big tabletop glue up, and I, I try not to do too much of that. So onto the glue up for this. Again, the Elmer's Wood Glue Max, and we're going to schmoo the snot out of this thing. Um, I'm only applying it to one side of the joint, not both, because it's just a lot easier. You can put all of them up except for one, and then put glue on all of their faces and put them down. You can see I'm, I'm smoothing some glue on the face of another one, and really that doesn't make any difference because I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be cleaning them all up later, and there's going to be a bunch of glue and squeeze out to address. But I'm getting ahead of myself on this, so um, yeah. Let's come back to the glue up. Now we put all of the glue on, squeeze it out, make sure it's on all the surfaces, and then we can start setting them down and clamping them up. The problem with this is you're never going to get these boards absolutely perfectly true one to another. And the general solution is you put in biscuits. Um, or dowels or other things like that for alignment. Now the problems with biscuits, dowels, and splines is they actually weaken the joint. Um, you don't have as much strength at the joint. It's a minor amount, but it's not huge. So generally I prefer not to put in dowels, splines, and biscuits. Um, I just prefer to take a little bit of time and, and be careful with it. The big reason for doing it is you can't run a big board through a surface planer. So if you're a power tool person, um, it's got to be all surface planed before you do this. But because I have hand tools, I can get it close enough and then I can scrape and plane it down. But uh, I got to do a little bit of wiggling on this. So I can use a hand screw clamp to get most things close to it. I have one clamp right across the middle and that's squeezing up the middle. I have all that trued up and now I'm doing each joint individually. Once the joint is glued up, I put a hand uh, clamp on the end and that keeps it nice and true. And that gets all of them within a 30 second of an inch or less. And really all I need then is a few scrapes with a card scraper or a plane in some cases and it comes out. Um, unfortunately, this is a big panel and it's very, very heavy and my ceiling is short. And so, um, yeah, we had a bit of fun working over here. This is Luke. He is the videographer who shoots most of the videos. So the camera's just on a tripod right now while we try and get this up in place. And it was a bit of a pain to work this around my shop. Um, but yeah, right here, what you're seeing, that is the totality of my shop. That is, that's, that's the whole shop. Actually, this camera is taking the shot from out of the shop in my laundry room. Um, so there, there isn't much space here, but it is enough that I can do uh, two dining room tables in the space. You kind of work with what you have. One of the nice things with hand tools is your shop size is determined by the project you want to do in it, not by the tools you want to put in it. But if you're working with power tools, um, your tools are what determine the size of the shop. Once that is all out of glue, then we can take the clamps off. Uh, most of the clamps will slide right off. I coat them all in uh, paste wax beforehand. Um, I usually do that about once a year or so just for the uh, the sake of it. And uh, that stops the glue from squeezing up on the, the clamps and they, they come right off. So loosen them all up and we now have all of that squeeze out to mess with. Oh my, what are we going to do? Well, the nice thing about the glue is it actually comes off uh, pretty quickly and easily. And I'm going to grab, I'm going to start with an old um, chisel. I have an old Harbor Freight that's just a mess. 
And I'm going to clamp it up in the bench so it doesn't move around. It's the nice thing about having two rows of dogs is I can clamp both of them in here and, uh, and get them up. Yeah, isn't that a nice mallet? <laughs> so I'm going to grab the, the cheap Harbor Freight chisel, bevel down, and go to town on it. Uh, once I get up most of the things, and this is going to do a lot of the heavy work, uh, then I'm actually going to come in with a nicer chisel, and I'm going to use that one bevel down. I'm going to ride on the heel of the bevel, and that will allow me to basically plane right down to a surface really quickly. Um, and it gets very, very close to, to what I want. Most of these are ready for a card scraper to go at them. Uh, a few of them are ever so slightly out of alignment. I'm going to bring a plane up and do that. But at this point, a lot of card scraper work. And I'm just going to go over the whole surface, um, particularly hit the joints. But I'm going to smooth everything out, get any of that glue squeeze out. And the card scraper really comes into its own here. And it is a phenomenal tool for this project, especially on this where some of the boards have grain going in one direction, some have going the other direction. And I really can't align them all that way because some of the boards switch grain direction halfway through them. So you have to be able to, to work with that. And the card scraper really doesn't care which way the grain is going. So I'll hit the majority of it with a plane, um, anything that really needs some work. And then I'm going to come with the card scraper and smooth it all out and get a really nice surface. Now the top is actually longer than it needs to be and wider than it needs to be. So I'm going to start. I'm going to pick one of these two ends that's really close to 90 degrees, and I'm going to mark a line on it, and then we need to plane the edge down. So yeah, we're going to get a little bit precarious here because there really is no good way to do this on a 60-inch long panel. Um, now I, I could um, set up a, a saw and get it a little closer, but I'm really only taking off a 16th of an inch or so. So in this case, the plane is, is just the way to go. It just means I have to climb up on top of the bench to kind of get at it. Once I have one end marked and, and planed down, then we can mark off to the other at 60 inches. And I left myself about a half inch to three quarter inch on this end. So I can strike a line on that and then we can cut it down. I'm going to be using a hard point saw on this because they have big cross cut teeth and they actually mark through the wood pretty quickly. Um, they, they last long and they're just good for making hard, fast cross cuts that you don't worry about how clean the surface is. Uh, because I'm going to hit it with a plane, I really don't need it to be absolutely perfect. And in this case, they, they work very, very well. So I always keep one or two of these in the shop for the jobs where I don't want to bring in a really nice saw for it. I just want to cut the board to length. But we need to do a little bit of plane up work. And in this one, I only needed a couple shavings off. So I'm going to leave it flat on the bench and just bend my body over and uh, plane across. And we can get that nice and clean and basically a ready finish. Then we need to trim it to width. So that means the other two sides. Uh, for this, it makes it much easier because I can put it down and I just clamp one end in the bench, have it rest on the ground, and I can plane that off. I'm going to go through the jointers and bring it down to flush. I'm waiting until I get one clean curl all the way from one end to the other. Uh, this one had a bit of a belly in the middle, so I was doing a bunch of passes in the middle until I got it down to flat. And then I can keep going along until we get that shaving I'm looking for that goes all the way along. I had one little problem in the middle that took me multiple passes to cover, but we finally got it. After that, we can then measure off, and I want it to be 36 inches across, and we can rip this down. Uh, this one is a lot easier to take down onto the saw bench because I can put the saw bench with the length of the table rather than going across the table. That's why I did the last one up on top of the main bench. Um, on this one, it was actually jamming up and it was pinching up on the blade. So one trick for that is throw a wedge in there, tap it down in, and now you can cut along it without any problems of it sliding in. And so we can rip all the way down along this. And look at that. Now the board well, has the right size. I'm going to chalk it up in the vise again, let it sit on the ground, and plane this edge smooth. And now I have a table that has all four edges the way they're supposed to be and uh, ready to go. So we've got two tables, eight legs, and eight stretchers, and lots of work. And uh, wow, yeah, um, lots of work. Eight legs, eight skirts, two tops, and a whole lot of work. It's around this point I realized this project is one of those that's just taking so much longer than it should. Uh, it's not that there's a lot of pieces, it's that the pieces are big and cumbersome and take a lot more work individually. So I'm going to have to stop it here and do a part two later on, and uh, then eventually we'll do one where we release all of it together. But uh, for right now, table knocked down, I guess. <laughs>
So there you have it. I hope you like it. Um, if you have any thoughts about this, um, it, it's, a, it's a really straightforward shaker table. Um, four legs, four skirts, a top. Uh, I'm going to be putting a couple of screw cleats into it so that it can be disassembled, but that, that's about it. It's a really simple, fun, nice design. And uh, we're going to be having a little bit of fun making this. So if you have any other questions, thoughts, ideas, things I should have done, let me know those down below. I do read through all of them, and I do get a bunch of interesting ideas from those. So if you have any something I should do in the future, let me know. You may not know it, but actually putting comments down there does help out the channel. It's a great way to say thank you. Uh, honestly, putting comments down there, hitting like, sharing, subscribing, those things help out the channel, and it really means a lot, so thank you for that. If you want to take it one step farther, there are the patrons on Patreon scrolling over here on the side. They are all the magical and wonderful people who are literally keeping this channel going. Without patrons on Patreon or members on the channel who've clicked the little join button down below, we wouldn't exist. We are sponsored by you, the viewer, and without that, uh, we wouldn't be here. So thank you. If you'd like to find out more about that, there's links to Patreon down below, or you can click the little join button to become a member, and that'll do it for now. Until next time, have a wonderful day. I like big legs and I cannot lie. Big leg goes by. I like big legs.